Hello everybody, it's Weather Alex, and today I'll be talking about a potential moderate severe weather outbreak for North Texas, Northeast Texas, and Central Texas this coming weekend, mainly on Friday night into Saturday for North Texas and Northeast Texas. So, um, anyways, what we're looking at is the dew points. Um, this is the surface dew points and wind barbs combined. Now, for sufficient severe weather, what we need as dew points um, are going to be about, I'd say, 60 plus is sufficient dew points for severe weather, especially in the southern plains for Texas and Oklahoma, Arkansas, and parts of Louisiana. What we really, for sufficient severe weather, we're going to need about 60 plus. Um, and uh, we definitely have those 60 dew points coming in from the Gulf about this is about Saturday evening and um, yeah we definitely got 60 degree dew points coming in from the Gulf and then we got a dry line right here set up right there and we got a cold front dropping south quickly into Oklahoma <clears throat> now um, yeah so my most my area of most concern for this severe weather outbreak or potential severe weather outbreak is going to be mainly in this area here. Now, um, my the biggest question that we're going to have to solve in the next coming days is let me erase that and uh, is going to be really this area here. Um, that and this is includes Fort Worth and um, not the Dallas area, but that circle. I I just, there's a dry line, and um, we're going to have to really see where this dry line positions when the time comes. And if we can get storms to develop along this dry line, if we can get storms to develop along this dry line, we will likely see major hail. We're talking baseball to tennis ball, maybe even softball sized hail along this dry line if we can get storms to develop. The wind damage threat is going to be significantly lower in the dry line area than it is going to be in eastern Texas. Eastern Texas really has an overall greater threats from wind damage to tor tornadoes so east texas does have a more favorable environment for wind damage and as of right now tornadoes as well but we're going to be taking a look at a lot at that in this video so um let's go switch over to mixed layer cape now this is really a good way of seeing what these storms are ingesting or put like breathing in i should say and so anyways for sufficient severe weather mixed layer cape should be around the 1000 to 1500 range for sufficient severe weather and anything above 2000 you're good as long as you got enough um like no cape and um or as long as you have no cap and you got good good uh, mid to upper level winds then you should be good on severe weather um but uh yeah we're looking at about um moderate cape um about 2200 2000 yeah 2000 cape for most of texas as we head south we get in those lesser cape values in some areas um yeah, we're looking at that 1000 range but look at along here along the dry line you can see we have better cape values over here in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas, but that is not where we're going to have storms developing. Over here is not where we're going to have storms developing. It's over here where we're going to have storms developing. So that's where we're going to watch. And along this dry line, we're looking at about 3,000 Cape. Now that's very large. That plays a very large role in thunderstorm development, especially if we can get a storm or two to fire along this dry line somewhere like that if we can get just a few maybe even down here one if we could just get a few storms to pop up along this dry line and head into this environment we will definitely be seeing some major hail um so let's go and take a look so yeah we definitely have sufficient mixed layer k what about most unstable um you can see that pretty much the same thing just this one's showing a bit higher values East Texas, roughly 2,500 to 3,000. Um, 
and then we have higher much higher Cape values as we had in Arkansas and Louisiana and Mississippi. But we, like I said, we don't have storms developing there. We have storms developing in Texas. And then along that dry line, we're looking at about 3,000, 3,500. So that's a lot better Cape along the dry line. Let's look at that lift. This is the lift in the atmosphere. And um, yeah, we got maxed out lift on the dry line and that's going to play a decent role as long as we don't have a major capping inversion along the dry line we should be able to get a few storms to fire along the dry line and then along or all of te under east texas we got sufficient lift over there too bulk shear um this is a big player in tornado or te tornadic activity and less of a tornadic environment for that little area here along the dry line a bit more favorable but as it heads into the less environment or less favorable environment for tornadoes um eastern texas like i said a bit more favorable environment for tornadoes um that doesn't mean we won't have tornadoes in north texas it just has a more favorable environment as of right now we're still four days or i think yeah four days away from this event so let, things will likely change and if major things change i will definitely make another video but as of right now it's looking like it's going to be locked in place um let's go take a look at supercell composite and this is what confuses me so if we look at the if we ju we just looked at the bulk shear now the bulk shear wasn't very high for this area here and it was a lot higher in this area here now if we look at the bulk the our uh, supercell composite we can see we're having pretty good values of supercell composite along the dry line and i mean obviously we have some widespread high values on east texas but a bit higher values along the dry line especially in this one pocket of um of uh maxed out um maxed out lift over in that area we got the isolated spot of super cell composite now that doesn't mean anything but <clears throat> anyways but yeah we definitely have sufficient super cell composite for all of eastern and north texas in parts of parts of central texas not all of central texas will see the or see a significant outbreak and then maybe let's take a look at significant tornado parameter now this is a huge um thing to look at and you can see right here this is resembling just really um this is resembling just of a, a potential environment for significant tornadoes and as you can see it's definitely not looking too good for central or that huge swath of north and central texas um as in east texas we're definitely got very good um significant composite over there and then in along the dry line if you take along the dry line <clears throat> you can see we do have decent supercell com or not supercell composite um significant tornado parameter um now that's normal then that, that's a normal thing we normally see along dry lines we see those better environments but normally we don't have actual storms that develop in that in good environment because it's a dry line in that area we usually see um we usually see thunderstorms develop just in front of the gosh why do i always do that we we usually see thunderstorms develop just in front of the dry line and in that area now um and from the first from the from the get go i was really expecting a non tornado environment for most of texas it's not looking like it will be <clears throat> but we're going to have to see in the next coming days and then i i, I guess we could put just pull out a little sounding for Fort Worth or Dallas and see what's happening in the atmosphere. Now, this isn't good. This is not good at all. This is not what you want to see in a super, or you, yeah, you, in general, you don't want to see this if you're searching for supercells. Now, <clears throat> so what we're looking at is the charts. Oh, let me change the color of my mark really quick. Okay. 
so okay this is the charts um the this is the moisture and temperature charts and if you look at the temperature you can see how it goes like this and then just makes a flat line that means that there's a large cap in the environment or in the atmosphere and that's not good at all because that will hinder thunderstorm development dramatically or dr dramatically I don't know why I always say that and then um, as moisture goes decent moisture but it's very shallow and that's also going to hinder thunderstorm development what we want to see with moisture you want to see it kind of do one of these and then do that not that that's that's what we call shallow moisture um when it goes a lot higher up in the atmosphere that's what we call um deep moisture and you want deep moisture for good healthy thunderstorms so <clears throat> and then if you look go over to the hodographs we're looking at surprisingly some decent curvature in the atmosphere which means that we do have a favorable environment for supercell and tornadic development um in a, in a way but if it just really depends on if we can even get any store of storm to actually develop along the dry line that's the real question here and then um <clears throat> possible hazard type is saying none and that is because it's recognizing there's a large cap in the atmosphere <clears throat> and then if we look down here supercell composite 17.5 we have moderate supercell composite cape 20 I think that's yeah 2800 cape that's not bad either definitely not the best but we we could have better but that's a very very sufficient environment for supercell development now I do think this is going to be it for today um I hope you're having a great day don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos and comment if you think I should improve anything in my videos have a great day